Fred Schoonmaker, a doctor of cardiology at St. Luke's Hospital in Denver, has had repeated experiences bringing patients back from death-like states. Their accounts of life-after-life experiences were so numerous and similar that Dr. Schoonmaker was intrigued by the phenomena. The first questions that began to come to my mind is, is that could this in some way be a dream-like state? Could this in some way be hallucination? If you take a person, for example, who's hallucinating, if you take a person who uh, may be in DTs from withdrawal from a drug dependency problem, they're seeing pink elephants, they're seeing uh, white rats, red rats, whatever it may be, but this is a terrifying experience to them. It was an unreal when they became back into and, and filtered back into the mainstream of life after being hospitalized over a period of time and rehabilitated. These kind of vivid expressions that they had, either in dream states or hallucinatory states, or if they were on any kind of drug medications for decreasing uh, pain or whatever, they knew they were not real. They were unreal. And the word that began to pass through many of these people as we talked back and forth was, this was a real experience that I had. I don't know what it was, but it indeed was real. Schoonmaker discovered that those who have had life-after-life experiences are profoundly changed. Unlike most of us, they no longer fear death. I found that people who have not really come to grips with their own feelings about death are not very well equipped to live. Janet Rainwater's encounter with death occurred in 1952. The doctor said I had flu, but there was a polio epidemic going on, and I became gradually aware that I had polio and finally went for a spinal tap and they said okay you better go to Variety Children's Hospital by the time Janet had reached the hospital she could barely walk as recreated for in search of each step jarred her already excruciatingly painful spine she lost her ability to swallow and encountered incredible difficulties in breathing finally her arms and legs became totally paralyzed. Janet lost consciousness and began drifting between life and death. Well, the next thing I knew, I was walking across this dry riverbed. And in the distance, there was this marvelous, marvelous white light. And I could hardly wait to... to to go into it. It was so peaceful and calm. I was incredibly happy. And then I became aware of some women. I felt they were calling to me, but I kind of said, go away, don't bother me, because I really wanted to go into the light. And then I realized that one of them, at least, was calling me Mary. And that startled me because that's the name I was called the first 10 years of my life and for 20 years no one had called me by that name so then I paid more attention and I realized it was my grandmother she had died two years before and she was someone who I'd loved very 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 much and then I realized if I was there with my grandmother I must be dead and I said to her Grammy if we're here together you're dead that means I must be dead too and she said that's right and then the next thing I knew, it was like I had total knowledge, as if someone had put a computer printout in my brain. I saw the results of all the actions and inactions I'd ever taken in my life. And surprisingly, there were no black marks for anything I'd done. I had lots of black marks for things I hadn't done. I said to my grandmother, it's too soon. I can't be dead. I've got to go back. And she said, well, you can go back, but leave right now and don't look at the light anymore. And I didn't even pause to decide. I just turned around and started back across the riverbed. And that went very quickly. But then I came to this practically vertical sand bank. And I started climbing up it. But I couldn't get really good handholds. And I would fall back down. And I'd work some more and climb some more. And I'd fall back down. But finally, I made it up, and I just fell back, exhausted, on the top of this sand dune. And the next second, I woke up, whatever you want to call it, and I was in my own body, and I could breathe, and I could swallow, which was incredible, because I hadn't swallowed for three or four days. 
someone came in the room almost immediately and I could tell they were really surprised at how well I was doing and uh, I said I can swallow and give me some water I want to prove it a little bit later they brought me a bowl of turkey broth this was dawn it was Thanksgiving Day and uh, Thanksgiving Day has always been a very special day for me it's Christmas and Easter and everything else rolled into one I'm not afraid of death. I know it's a beautiful experience that when it comes to be my time, I'm going to really look forward to it. No one is sure what the near-death experience really is. But the message from those who have encountered it and returned is that death should not be feared. They suggest that what is to come is simply life after life. We cannot say for sure that the life after life experience is actually death itself. Obviously, however, it does alter our perceptions of life and the hereafter. Based on the experiences that we've heard from those who have had the near-death experience, this has influenced my concept of a God that makes him far greater, far more merciful, far more loving than I'd ever conceived of him to be before. Dr. Lauren Young is an eminent theologian and scholar. His experiences with those who have had life after life encounters have given him new religious insights. I've been under the influence of the light who have really come into a personal encounter with this image of mercy and love, come back into this world with a totally different attitude. And to me, this is a solid encounter, an exquisite expression of what it really means to come face to face with God. If we could remove from society a major fear, there's a tremendous contribution. Death is a major fear. Those who've experienced it are no longer afraid of life or death. 